Go right here, Coach. Side by side? Yep, side by side is good. Coach, if you wanted to start with an opening statement, um, and then we'll open up for questions. All right, great. I know, um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Pitt. I thought they were outstanding how they moved the ball. Their soccer IQ, their athleticism, the shape on the field. And, um, you know, in the first half, we had two or three good chances and they had two or three good chances. And uh, if we maybe get one of them early, we could have been in the game. But just second half, um, we really moved the ball well and, and exposed our frailties and scored two or three great goals and uh, fully deserving of the win. From my point of view, they're probably the best college side I've played against in my 33 years. Um, the way the way they move the ball, the power they got, I couldn't see really many weaknesses in, in who they are and what they are. So re really proud of my team and that we hung in there. Did create a couple more chances in the second half, but overall I thought second half thoroughly outclassed by a magnificent team. Coach uh, John Krasinski from Pittsburgh Soccer. Now, I just a couple opportunities there early in the, in the first half that maybe could have swung some things differently. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. Look, you score goals; it helps your emotion. It helps, it helps you uh, your grit and determination. And I'm being brutally honest: the, the three chances we missed in the first half. We've been putting away all season, and that's the difference. It's a fine line, you know. The header at the back post, the the, the chance on the ground at the back post, and then the header with about three seconds to go that should have been put in as well. There's three chances that if you get one or two of them, you're you're totally back in the game, and your emotions different. Instead, you know, we didn't. And, um, probably put us on the back foot emotionally, and then then it's it's a difficult task from there. Coach, I just want to congratulate you for this season so far. It's been an honor to be do, uh, covering a lot of your games. And congratulations to you as well, George. It has been a successful season. And if you had to just describe this season, what has it been like for you two? I mean, for me personally, it's been a pleasure to be a part of, a pleasure to be a part of this group. I'm proud of all the guys. Um, I've just really enjoyed this year. It's been my favorite year. Uh, today, and I'm glad that I get to leave on a high note um, in the NCAA Sweet 16. Yeah, from my point of view, look, winning cures all. Yeah, we've done a lot of winning this year, so it does, it does create a lot of joy, a lot of uh, jubilation, a lot of elation. But more importantly, being around this group of young men who are superb uh, human beings and a pleasure to be around and coming to work every day. It's not work, it's fun. And uh, their effort, they put in practice, that how they are off the field, how they conduct themselves, how they are in the classroom, magnificent students, most of them. And just general great people who I'm proud of. And I know, look, some will play pro afterwards, we, we believe, but most of them will go out there in the, in the big world and they'll do um, fantastic things because they're great people. And coach Eddie Fitz, WRHU, when you think about uh, this season and some of the younger guys that you have, and this can go for, for George as well, has there been anything you guys have been telling them late in these final stages of the year to help maybe inspire them, get them ready to come back next year even stronger after this is the first time we've seen the C uh, Hofstra in the Sweet 16? Yeah, I mean, we've just had a little meeting there after the game and said, look, we've proved we can do it. We're a great group. We're losing four really fantastic seniors, but why can't we do this again next year? I think this team set the bar for the, for, for the future and we retain a lot of the squad and we've, we've been shown what the bar is now with, uh, with Pitt. Very, very good team. So we know what we're striving for and it, it's good to win for in life. And uh, we've got 20 odd returning great players and hopefully we can add a few more recruits and, and, and strive to be at this level again. What do you think, George? Um, from me, with the younger players that, that have come in have just pushed us to be the best that we could be on, on, on and off the field. I mean, um, we've said after the game that this is the standard now. 
this the standard set and we we don't want to be um we don't want to be having seasons any less than this in the future all right any more questions guys can i just add uh, pit have been incredible uh, gracious hosts here and they've, they've been magnificent in their hospitality and we really appreciate them and wish them the best of luck in the next round so uh it's going to take a really good team to beat this team. So uh, hopefully uh, they go onwards and upwards and we wish them all the best. Thank you, Coach. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I resume the recording. I got head coach Jay Vitovich and Rafael Crivello for you. So I'm going to have them step up. Go side by side, watch your step. And then, Coach, if you want to go uh, opening statement, and then we'll go on for questions. Just make sure that's up. Yeah, we're very excited about the, re the result moving forward and into the uh, Elite Eight. It's a uh, really good performance by my guys. Uh, we found the goals at the right time of the game and uh, were able to manage it well. Uh, first half, we were fortunate to escape a couple of uh, Good efforts by uh, by Hostra, who, uh, as we know from the past, a very uh, dangerous team. But uh, overall, just very pleased with the performance by the guys, and uh, look forward to moving forward. Coach, uh, with with Hofstra being such a prolific offense, what do you think you guys did well tonight to to shut them down on the defensive side? Uh, you know, our attackers were, did a really good job of putting pressure on, uh, on their uh, delivery. Uh, and the backs did a great job of uh, denying service into the box. I think that was the biggest thing. And uh, the backs were also very good at finding, uh, finding the balls, uh, the air balls that were being put in to, uh, to, to initiate their attacks. I thought they just did a good job, like I said, denying uh, service into, into the wide guys. And then uh, they handled the wide guys and the, uh, and the midfield did a good job find, dropping down and uh, finding the second ball. So I think that was a, a key part. And we were able to, to keep the ball for long periods of time, which uh, helped us uh, avoid them uh, getting at us. Jay, you basically just answered my, my, my next – my question was, you know, so how – you, you don't have to ask. No, I know, right? but I, I, I got to add to it, though. The possession was, was – how important, though, was it and how much time did you spend in practice this week preparing in terms of how important was it to possess against this Hofstra team? I think Rafa, I mean, it was very important and it's something we've been discussing, but this practice really started back in, uh, in August, you know, and it was great to see them in the fruition of it tonight. They uh, did a great job in the buildouts. Uh, they found themselves third man play and, and handled the marking of, uh, of, of Hofstra. So I think, uh, yeah, they it got better, eh? I'd say. Yeah, yeah, we worked a lot on it. Like even last week on the tempo of the game, when to attack, when to keep the ball a little bit longer, to bounce it in the middle, to open spaces. And I think that it was pretty good today on this aspect of the game. We knew how to keep the ball, how to make them run, and how to like push when we had to. So they weren't very able like to set their soccer like during this game. Yeah, Rafael, as a defender, I guess you probably don't get all that many scoring opportunities. What's it like for a game like tonight to, to be the one uh, celebrating the goal twice? I'm not going to lie. It was a great feeling like to score, like especially at home, because I scored once this season, but it was away. And scoring at home in front of our crowd like and such important goal like this during the tournament, it's really important for me. And... I really hope that it's going to happen again. Like I'm working a lot on it and yeah, it was great. And it was also great to help the team to reach this really important win for us at that time. Raf, uh, in terms of the being prepared on corner kicks in those moments, you know, in a close match, you never know, but um, coming up with a set piece goals, but you did it twice today. I'm just getting to the ball. What, what's, what's your mentality there? Uh, we've been working a lot on it as well and I think that when we are going into the box we only have to think about scoring goals about like being like really like strong like in the box and for example in the second goal like but the first header the keeper like saved it but I was like all right it's not done like I have to 
put the ball in, uh, in the net. So I tried my best like to stay focused and to push even harder to get the second goal. But yeah, it's like a man's mindset. It's really important when we have corner kick to use that at, as real opportunities to score goals and to finish teams. Uh, Jay, I believe I can't I think uh, eight of the nine goals you guys have scored this uh, into the tournament have been either scored or assisted on by French players. Uh, was there was there some sort of French pipeline going on here, which is the, the new the new wave? I hope so, I guess. Uh, no, it's been very fortunate uh, uh, with, uh, you know, our first player and Valentin Noel came on over and I believe he had a good experience. We certainly enjoyed having him and the and the same people that, that helped us. Uh, then we were able to get Rafa and Breton. And uh, yeah, it's just been, we've been very fortunate. So uh, they fit in, they're very good students. They've, uh, they've been educated in the soccer system uh, in, in France. And they've been uh, tremendous people too, which is, uh, I never knew that about French. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we are really enjoying our time here. Everything is really nice and we are, having a lot of pleasure on the pitch with everyone. So yeah, it's a really nice feeling to be here. Jay, I just wanted to ask and both of you really about the defensive um, focus today, I, knowing how good Hofstra is offensively and being able to score quickly and get in transition and counter. Um, you know, just talk about your team's overall defensive performance. Yeah, I mean, you know, once again, it, it goes, we believe in the collective and in in that first line defense of our front runners, you know, Val and uh, G, Apai, you know, their pressure there, the wingers, Breton and Dexter and Matt Bailey, they put good pressure on them. So it, it took five, 10 yards off of their uh, their service. And then the backs were, were, were tremendous at, you know, at playing those balls because it was everything was being... Uh, it was a combative, it was confrontational, and they were able to win those. And, and our, uh, our attacking guys then fell down you know, deep to, to find the second ball. So that was an overall effort, you know. And, uh, and, and Nico was called in to play as well a couple of times big, you know, when, when it did skate through. But they did, they did a tremendous job. Like you said, we were, we were very, very conscientious of uh, they're attacking four or five players were capable of scoring 40, close to 40 goals this year. And uh, the services are great. They they attack the box well, so we were very concerned with that. And we we're also very concerned how that when they score a goal, they uh, they tend to come in uh, in bunches for them. So uh, we thought we did a very good job managing that today. Um, cool. Another question for for both of you. Uh, you guys, I'm sure you know, uh, could be playing Notre Dame next uh, match, depending on how their result goes. Is that something that you guys have, have circled, uh, knowing knowing that? Uh, they knocked you out of the AC tournament. For me, what circled is to get to the lead eight and to get to the final four, to get these guys back to, to have an opportunity to chase the, the big trophy. Uh, Notre Dame had success against us this year, but, you know, history, if you look back at the years before like that, I think we've done quite well at them. And, and I think that our guys are confident enough now to, uh, to know that uh, they're going to be a formidable challenge. Um, but the one that will rise to. And uh, you also know that you can't count Wake Force out of this equation either. And that would be another challenge because they beat us uh, earlier in the, in the year as well. All right, one more question if you guys have any. Jay, in terms of your team's overall health, uh, I know Rodrigo took a pretty good knock there uh, or he just had issues with his hamstring. It was like he was, couldn't, he had to come off. Um, any, just what's the overall team health at this point everything has been great uh, people are available are available and uh, that was uh, just a tragedy because you could see what a what a fine performance he was having he hasn't played in about uh, over a month and you could just see what a factor he is for us uh, we it is, it is going back to a renewal of his uh, hamstring issue we're not sure the extent of it now we'll, that'll be assessed in the morning and the next week and We'll do the same thing. We'll bust our hump and he'll he'll continue working as hard as possible to get on the pitch for us because he knows how important he is uh, to this program. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you for supporting Thank you. it. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Off your natural. Yeah. <laughs>